What's up everybody? Welcome to Hot Sup Alert, week of April 24th, 2017. Here we will talk about hot new subs. And this is by popular demand from a couple of good friends of mine who want me to talk about the same crap that I tell them about all day anyways. This week we're gonna talk about microdosing LSD. I just wanted to see the look. This week, intranasal insulin. So I'll be honest, I haven't used this in forever. And now that I'm starting this channel, this is one of the hotter nootropics that I want to talk about. Um, some people don't believe that I've actually tried any nootropics outside of just B vitamins and things like that and sleep, as you may have seen in my previous video about sleep. So something a little more, you know, interesting. Intranasal insulin has been a hot topic lately. There's a couple people online who are really pushing it and mainly because you can do it yourself. So let's first talk about that. You can make this, not make it, but you can put this together yourself. This is not my recommendation to do so, but you can do it. Um, some people have found out that you can go get a specific type of insulin used by diabetics at Walmart and you then take that and you put it into one of these little sprayers that you buy on Amazon and you just sit here and spurt it into your nose. Alleged benefits are pretty much everything. Um, it's almost being treated like a holy grail. So kind of in the same way that the people who are big on microdosing psychedelics are saying it treats everything under the sun, the intranasal insulin people are saying that it does almost everything for you too. More energy, helps your mood, uh, helps depression, helps anxiety, more focus, better memory recall, uh, everything, pretty much everything you could possibly think of that you would ever want out of any nootropic. And here's the great news, it does these things. The reason it works is that insulin, similar to how diabetics use it, um, basically helps shuffle uh, sugar into cells. And when that's in your brain, it does that and pretty much provides your brain with a little more energy to work off of. So there's studies backing this and that it does work. Uh, the studies have proven it in, I think, um, patients with Alzheimer's and that it's working very well. Now, here's the kicker to that one, first of all the con, is that they've started to discuss in people with Alzheimer's, and there's also evidence showing that Alzheimer's might be related to things similar to, or problems with insulin in the brain. And that pretty much treating it with insulin can make the problem worse. So that's fine and dandy if you have Alzheimer's and you're just gonna treat the problem with insulin and you know most people with Alzheimer's tend to be an older population, so you wanna have the best results you can in the time that you have left to live. And I'm not trying to be morbid here, but anytime you're assessing treatment for something, you should also consider how long it will work for you, any risks, long-term risks, and how long before those could actually become a very large risk to you. So if you're gonna use something like this and if it does pose a risk, which is a hotly debated topic, if you're gonna use something like this and it does pose a risk to you, you have to consider that, hey, you know, maybe I'm only, I'm 32 years old, so I have probably a lot of life left to live. You know, I'm really hoping I don't get run over by a New York City bus tomorrow, knock on wood, or fake marble. <laughs> So you need to keep stuff like that in mind. And there's definitely been some, uh, some proponents, some people telling others that there may be a high risk of that, that it could pretty much make the problem worse and generate symptoms similar to Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative diseases. That's kind of a big thing against it and it's a potentially large risk. None of that's proven really, but it's all theoretical and there's enough reasons backing it that it's kind of believable. So. Another pro is that this stuff is ridiculously easy to get and it's cheap to get, as I already said. You can get it down at Walmart for, I think, $25 and you're set to go for a month. Um, now, getting into my personal experience with it a little bit, because that's you know mostly what uh, this video is going to be about, hot supplement alert, like I want to talk about something that I've tried, tell you my opinion of it, and a little bit of research behind it. So yes, I did try it. It worked all right. I didn't notice anything ridiculous about it. I did notice pretty much the clean benefits. A little more energy, lift in mood. Um, I think it's maybe a little more creative. I don't know, that might have been placebo. There's definitely something there, and it definitely helped. Um, I have really no complaints about that. So the reason I stopped using it though, I'm a little concerned that there might be long-term problems from it, and they didn't totally balance out the effectiveness of it. So in my mind, something that's producing a much greater benefit, um, the reason that I still use a drug like uh, Nuvigil or our uh once in a while is that it gives me enough benefit to offset anything that anyone has claimed could happen in the long term. 
developing Alzheimer's is actually something for me that's a large personal fear or any sort of disease like that. It's really something that scares me and really something that concerns me because I don't want to lose that ability to, you know, to have the full functionality of my brain. Risking something like that is not worth it for me personally. You may differ in that. Um, aside from that, it, like I said, it works. There's you know, no doubting that. And the side effects, the short-term side effects are pretty minimal. It's easy to use, um, it's legal, and everything else. So it's low cost. Another weird reason though that I kind of decided it wasn't for me, and I haven't heard this discussed by anyone, is that it almost had a weird addictive property to it. And I know there's probably going to be 500 comments appearing the second I say that, but let me explain. So I will admit, first of all, that I have a fairly addictive personality. And I noticed that when I was using it, that it worked pretty well. And it worked well enough that when it started to wear off, or when I at least thought it started to wear off, that I sprung right for it. It was like it was really good and really useful. And because of that, I wanted more of it. And it just activates something in my brain that I recognize now as, you know, this is addicting and it should probably stay away from it. Like I said though, this isn't addicting the tr classic way of like, it's like cocaine or something, illicit drugs where you just absolutely need to have more, or you're craving it, you're shaking without it. But it was something that it, it was just almost too good to be true and you thought, wow, maybe I'll just keep taking more. And I didn't really notice any general side effects as I tried more of it, like a few squirts of it. Um, I forget the exact dosage amounts that it meters out to be. I didn't notice anything really bad happening, so why not add more? And that kind of bothers me. Um, you know, that means that there might be a long-term side effect that is going to happen someday because I'm using more of it, but there's no limiting factor in the meantime. So that's something that's definitely worth considering. Um, there's really not anything keeping you from using more. That might differ for some other people besides me, who knows. But it was definitely a big concern for me, and it was one of the two reasons that I stopped using it. That and just that, you know, the long-term side effects that might be there are pretty serious and definitely not something to be messed around with. But that said, it is very effective as a nootropic. I mean, compared to anything else I've used, compared to the race of TAMs, it definitely does a lot more, and it's just, it works fast, it works easily, it's cheap. If you want to try it, go for it. I give intranasal, intranasal insulin a B. Thank you. Leave your opinion below if you've tried it or if you're thinking about trying it, let me know. And if you have any ideas for the next video, next supplement you'd like to see in Hot Sup Alert, let me know as well. Hit subscribe and we'll see you next week.